we can do it, we can get it. Go, go, we can do it, we can get it, get it, get it, go. WordIHeard.com, it's Lil D. I'm in the Z1079 Cleveland studios with the current night jock, Tropicana. How you doing, Sugar? I'm good, how are you? Now, everybody knows Z1079, they know Tropicana. Here's the music from Ray Jr., my man, Machine Gun Kelly, Tezo, and Dubbo. Shout out to EST, it's called Like Whoa, and this is exactly how we party. It's a theme song for it, check it out. I was graduated from high school, I had just made 18, and the radio station that I was, that was in my city at the time, which was Fort Seal, they had a contest called Making a DJ. It was like, probably right now, it would be the corniest thing in the world for radio, but it was so dope then because it was it was new. It was around a time where uh, a lot of reality shows had just begun to take off, so mm -hmm. it was like making a band and American Idol mixed together and put on the radio. So what they would do is like, you would go up, you would record something, you would try to say something cool. I was always corny, still corny, don't care. But <laughs> being corny worked, cause they just was like, well, she corny. She got to be genuine, we got to like her. So I would record something every day, and every day at three o'clock they would play it, and you didn't know, one, know anyone's name, they gave you a number. So I was contestant number five. So we went on this journey for like maybe six to eight weeks. And when the eight weeks was over, um, they voted somebody off every week, or somebody got voted off. And they would just vote for the number that they liked, and I won. So my first, uh, my first day on radio was from winning a making a DJ contest. I started at 6 a.m. in the morning on Sunday mornings. It was the worst shift in the entire world. As uh, you already know how that go, them early mornings, it was the worst. And I was a kid, so you know how, mm -hmm. how you grow. But the dope part about it was that the city, which was a really dope city, but at the same time, very harsh and loving, kind of like your grandma and them, mm -hmm. they would call like, you do not sound good today. You tired? Because you sound tired. Because I'm tired listening to you, and I wanted you to turn <laughs> me up. So uh -huh. it, it was harsh, but it was great because it just made you grow up. Like yeah. they grew up and loved on you. Like we chose you, so now you gotta make us proud. I went to Cameron University and transferred to Oklahoma State University. While I was in Oklahoma, I worked in Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and um, Fort Sale, Oklahoma. And I moved here and I started all over again from the, from the bottom. You said something, you said the people in Oklahoma was like, we voted for you, now you gotta make us proud. Yeah. Do you feel that same way here? It's, a, it's like a weird connection because I'm not from here, but I feel like from the moment I got here, it was kinda like God's hand on me and just utilizing local rappers and the community. It was kinda like they just said, you know what? It's something about you that we like, so we're gonna make sure that you stay out of harm's way. The people who had the hardest life in Cleveland, they, they just kind of like grabbed me and said, you know what, like we need somebody to like to speak for us. So I'm going to show you the most important things to me and my values and I'm going to show you the worst things of where I come from. And I need you not to judge me for that and I need you to embrace the things that I love and be my voice. And that's just kind of what happened from Kinsman on to St. Clair, like in each neighborhood and it just was a blessing. Now we all know your show is number one, been number one since you've been here. That's so what what's the motivation to continue pushing? I don't want to lose. I don't want you to be able to say, you know your show used to be number one. Remember your show was number one last month? Or six months ago you had the number one show in the city. Like, I just don't want to lose. To have people be able to say, oh yeah, that's my girl, man. She killing. Like, that That makes me feel good. Or for my mother to be like, I knew you was going to do something. All that talking you've been doing all your life. Like, you better not let me down. So, that's my motivation to try my very best to, to be number one. I don't really know how we doing it like honestly to tell you the truth it's just a blessing and a surprise every time that people are still consistently rocking with us for so long tell me what's the most important thing to you outside of radio the politically correct thing that i'm supposed to tell you is um affecting the community um but over the last few years and i feel like um i try my very best to to do that in this area but I think that a lot of times, like radio personalities, people don't get a chance to see how much we sacrifice. So right now, the most important thing to me outside of radio is my nephew. He's three, he's bad, he's <laughs> funny, and my mother. My mother's going back to college, keeping her encouraged to keep doing what she's doing and making sure that he has an opportunity to kind of grow up a little bit better than we did. Like, that's currently what the most important thing to me is outside of radio. 
thank you for even letting me be on your show. You already know. Appreciate it. I'm Lil D and that's the word I heard. You go, girl. Welcome to wordiheard.com.